Hi. Hello. Welcome, welcome to Indian Tennis Daily. Good afternoon to you. <laughs> Thank you. It's just exactly twelve noon here. Yep. Yeah, for us it is uh, uh, evening. I mean, late evening, but for you it is uh, nice afternoon. Perfect. So, so how was your practice with Lana uh, today? <laughs> today actually didn't happen because it's raining like crazy outside. Oh, so Bangalore today, uh, had heavy rain this morning. Yeah. Heavy rain. One one and a half hours. Wow. Today I didn't only know Bangalore rain here. So <laughs> yeah. So, I, I, so Bangalore and Tampa are I think uh, nearby. Rain here, it's raining here. <laughs> <laughs> the good omen. <laughs> Correct. We are starting, and uh, the rains are also connecting. Correct. Correct. So, so like, uh, you know, how how is uh, Sahana's interest in uh, in tennis? You know, um, you okay. In today's day and age, <laughs> it's a little different. So Correct. you can't uh, you can't equate what we had and what yes. the kids are today. you know um so she's definitely interested that's the only sport she will do she's not interested in any other sports but uh, music is her first love she is very um she has a ear for music she uh plays a piano guitar she sings so she oh. No problem. Sorry, you're picking up a lot. I couldn't hear you. Uh, yeah, no. They said somebody. I mean, I got a message that uh, your words are echoing. So, just want to know. Are you speaking? Right? Or are you speaking directly? I am just uh, speaking directly to the phone. Okay, fine. Okay, then must be something to the network. I am also on the phone. So maybe okay. reduce the volume a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Got it. And you can reduce volume a little bit and check if yeah, that works. Yeah, I did. I did. Yeah. Yeah. I hope uh, it's clear, guys. Yeah. Now it's okay. Yeah. Now you're okay. okay. Perfect. Perfect. Whatever it is, work. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Sorry to uh, disrupt you. Yeah. You're talking about Sahana's. Uh, no, no. I just music. said, you know, she's really into more. Uh, yeah, she, her first love is music. So, uh, she plays the guitar and piano and says she sings a lot. So I mean in a couple of years she still plays tennis she started playing tournaments here um but okay. you know we I didn't push her too hard yet but now is the time when if she wants to take tennis up a little more seriously this is the time because she just turns uh, 13 14 right now so okay. uh it's uh, next two years will be a interesting thing for her to see what she wants to do I mean uh End of the day, I know how hard this is <laughs> so <laughs> unless you really Who else want knows it better? No yeah unless you really want it you shouldn't do it you know correct, correct. there's no Very point good. in forcing them because uh, <laughs> this is not something you can do if you if you don't enjoy it also it's not like you know just because the the mother or father played tennis the daughter has or the child son has to play tennis yes if it was the case uh, you and me wouldn't have played tennis right we would have played cricket rather <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly and now there's been a doctor other small thing small thing i want to mention is i gave her an option 2 years back i said I don't care which sport you play. I just want you to play one sport that you spend every evening between 4 and 6 in the evening. You got to spend it on a sport. You know, Ingela Valley when you go outside and play, you can't uh, it's not really um uh, you don't get your heart rate up, you don't really get a workout out of it. There's nothing going on if you just go outside and just randomly play, you know. You need to play any sport, you pick any sport you want. and focus on that it doesn't matter where you go with it but you got to pick a sport i i gave her that option you can go you can do soccer you can do golf you can do lacrosse here there are a lot of options gymnastics whatever yeah. you want you pick Correct. it i do not need you to pick tennis at all and she said no mom i want to pick tennis as yes <laughs> this is a big relief <laughs> because all the other sports i i really don't know enough about it mm-hmm. so she picked tennis so i'm i'm happy we're able to spend this time i'm able to spend this time with her on the court you know all so right. it's fun you know i i i have fun with it because um with my dad my dad coached us so mm. i feel like it's not that difficult for a parent coach a child that's that's where i come from mm. you know okay. so Does uh, Sanjeev uh, play tennis? I mean, uh, he does. He does. He um, 
uh, he didn't really pick up tennis till uh, till we met but uh, the thing is he, they are so athletic in that family that oh, you know, know. he's so His quick brother, yeah Yes, he's so quick and so um well coordinated that he he can actually play decent, you know. He I in she he plays UST leagues and stuff whenever he can. You coach him? <laughs> uh, I used to. Nowadays he doesn't have time. He's really busy at work, so okay. I I used to coach him, yes. Okay. But the <laughs> the coaching experience was okay. I mean, not like the usual usual husband wife thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the funny thing is uh, in this one aspect he uh, he doesn't argue with me. So <laughs> oh, <that's nice. laughs> in this one area we don't fight. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Yeah, I mean, uh, you're talking about uh, parenting and uh, you spoke about your father. Of course, I mean your father has been the the backbone of your uh, you know right. your your life you know he has been your you know, he, he played multi roles like, you know he was Correct. your father then uh, he was your coach and yes. of course he was your sponsor too <laughs> yes yes so like you know when you look back now i mean uh, like you know, some words of wisdom which uh, he always said you know does that uh, you know keep ringing in you now yes i mean um, there are so many things but the crux of the matter i want to mention is he is probably the only one who has actually told me love the sport mm. um if you don't love the sport you can't really do too much with it you know because he he'll say take pleasure in actually getting on the court and and you know how you play you displace an opponent out of the court hit a short angle take pleasure in those things and really love the sport i don't have i don't recall anybody else telling me something like that you know hmm, uh, end of the day uh, when you when you're having a rough time in europe you don't have money you're struggling if you didn't love the sport you couldn't have done it okay. you know actually and I'm you couldn't to... have sustain sustain even having the sport in your life for this long i mean if you're only doing it for the laurels that it brings you hmm. then you're in trouble you cannot yeah. just be yeah. looking at Uh, what prize am i going to get how much prize money am i going to earn <laughs> because <laughs> for a long time we didn't see money you know? <laughs> so and also when you were playing the money was even uh, not even way close less, to what it is so, no in fact in my book at written really like there was one tournament in uh, i think in spain it's a 10000 dollar satellite tournament if i had won that match uh, a doubles match i think it was a semi final or something even if i had won that match i would not have enough money to pay my hotel that night <laughs> so, <laughs> so so winning the tournament was a loss <laughs> yes losing yes. early and going back is uh, what makes money <laughs> <laughs> believe it or not sometimes it it was true i and this was not the t- age of atms and all i couldn't go and get money wherever if you had cash you had cash otherwise you didn't have money so you better better lose and go back you know because i mean i was talking to i've been mean, talking about your uh, father's advice i was talking to ganesh so he said uh, it was amazing uh, like you know uh, to what strategy and uh, approach your dad had he didn't right. elaborate but he said i mean obviously you both uh, you know, had the uh, you know experienced it uh, all the way correct so, so uh, something um, some some details from that yes, like an approach yes. or strategy <laughs> this man he um he just passed away by the way like um, 45 50 days ago so um it is a huge loss for all of us of the thing about him is he just thought very differently from everyone and one person he looked up to was uh, uh, ramesh krishnan's dad mr krishnan oh, no, krishnan no good he no, was a huge fan of uh, uh, ramesh's dad no, r krishnan and he always admired his style of game how he played how he would you know he had such great um, feel of the ball and he could do anything he wanted like he used mm-hmm. to call him a magician but mm-hmm. their philosophy was that you should always maintain a court you should oh, okay. always have a court at your beck and call okay. and uh, uh, ramesh krishna i know uh, they had their own court in their house itself they yeah. had a court yeah. Yeah. so my dad um, with all the very low resource we didn't have any it's not like we had land and we could do all that mm-hmm. but somehow he would always find a court for us to practice so oh. that is the number one thing that he mm-hmm. like uh, all of a sudden uh, he was member of cosmopolitan club we used to go and play in city club in coimbatore everything but 
end of the day if any of those places were closed we always had a court to go and play okay. yes so uh, we we basically uh, he would he would basically coach us in that court so every day <laughs> for what 10 12 years every day morning and evening many times it will be the same drill <laughs> <laughs> same drill over and over again and uh, i mean how uh, how can you not get better if you have some iota of talent you will get good True. you know <laughs> and, yeah so also that, uh, I mean, philosophy that he had that he wanted to maintain a code and he always we always did so if if it was rained in cosmo and, and uh, all the ball boys what they used to do is they put more water on the court so the court <laughs> we don't <run>. come back <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so at that time we'll have an option to play okay so that he did and that was a huge thing and secondly he was our our coach and he mm. basically he uh, he had a system where he said you have to drill you had to uh, go and play rallies you had to play matches you have to do all these three and he gave us uh, this thing about it was very systematic whether you i mean at that age and most of it was self taught he read about mm. arbitration maintaining co- court and then he would read about stan smith and everything all the self talk you know and so he made sure we got all these three things every single day very sensible but very uh, you know useful uh, advice i mean it's very yes. sensible very simple but that's what tennis is right i mean you need to get to a level of perfection where you Correct. practice Correct. and also another thing is uh, i mean you all used to practice like in the afternoon right like those days tennis so everybody played morning then Correct. evening after like you know 3 3:30 but you all your family basically it's a family secret or like kg ramesh suresh you ganesh all of you played from before like no from 132 to 334 before the members came not all the that happen not all the time but uh, my dad used to uh, you know uh, we used to try to get to city club at 3:30 or 4:00 4 o'clock is when my school was left out by 4:30 okay. it'll be packed you know mm. um so what he used to do is take me from school directly uh, i used okay. to go in school clothes and play uh, uniform okay. and only play yeah. because you'll get that 415 which means you'll get one extra chance to play one extra set you know so those yeah. kind of things but i know ramesh suresh and all they used to get there earlier because they yeah. were older and uh, from college they used to come mm. earlier they used to start yeah. ar- around 3 3:30 they were they were playing yeah. before uh, that also, I mean, they were the only ones who played in the sun <laughs> <laughs> so yeah correct so we all played at 4 o'clock 3:30 we learn for another couple of hours it will be nice to play illa <laughs> in fact he'll take me to city club i'll play one or two sets there then he'll take me to cosmo, cosmo. and play one or two sets there and uh, whether it's singles doubles it was immaterial who you played was immaterial you just had to play you know and, so uh, Uh, this one um, no, i mean one thing always here you know query i had was your dad was so much into cricket like you know he was a ranji player and was really good and he was playing first division coimbatore league Correct. Correct. so not quite quite till late quite late Correct. in his life uh you, did you ever try cricket or uh, did he ask you to try cricket no for me cricket was not an option at all he didn't give me that uh, because at that time this was what women. 30 years ago yeah, cricket exactly. for women was not really mm-hmm. well this thing for my brother though it was very hard because my brother just he wanted to play cricket <laughs> ganesh would uh, he, i mean <laughs> literally Uh, dad will say okay uh, we we'll, uh, he he'll, he'll still play he used to still play for lmw and uh, mm. a couple of other okay. places they used to need, yeah. play coimbatore district and all so dad will say why don't you just come and watch or something like that at 8 o'clock he would uh, be in white and white and he'd be standing outside <laughs> he he was so into cricket that it was very hard for my dad to kind of veer him off that it was very hard but uh, he he was he was like when he passed away this time there were many cricket players who were coming in and the number one thing they kept telling was he should have played for india oh. he should have played test he had yeah. that kind of talent he really did i mean it's not just one person who's saying that okay. about you know millions i mean whoever came to that uh, this thing they were saying he should have so he was definitely not given a chance just because of politics Oh, oh. Yeah, complete politics mm-hmm. and because he was he kept uh, staying in coimbatore district all the people in chennai uh, definitely yeah, didn't give him the opportunities yeah. he should have been given 
So what so, ended up happening is he had this slide, this thing that cricket's not going to do it. I, with my stuff. kind of talent, with my kind of this thing, uh, I, I was not it. given a chance. So he didn't believe that you had an opportunity in cricket, even if you were so talented. He no, didn't believe in that, you know. So but that's they, why uh, he basically took us off, yeah. and took us off. Uh, cricket was not an option according to him, you know. So that's why uh, Ganesh, I think, on the tennis court, he tries some uh, cricket shots. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> Makes it up, you know, in whatever comes no, in the system. No, this is actually a, a funny story. So, um, you know, in in city club, we used to they used to uh, give us new balls to play one day a week or two days max. So what will happen is. Within one hour or two hours, that ball will become completely bald, Mortai. complete mortai. <laughs> okay, so then everybody is suckling cricket. Oh, so okay. my my dad once came to was coming to watch him play. So he enters, and everybody is like playing cricket inside <laughs> inside the tennis court, and he was like, "Oh God, what is what is going on?" And all the city club players, they I know that they know this, you know. Uh, so this uh, we're talking about uh, practice in Cosmo. You used to play with uh, members, no? And yes. I think, uh, you know, I think I think we saw a double fault. Uh, like Selvira Jankul's uh, father used to shout at you, and yes. uh, no, and you you know you had to like you know the members used to beat you and all that. So you no, think, no, uh, they never beat me. They never beat okay. me and all. Uh, you oh, even in, uh, in the sense uh, you, oh. uh, whenever I used to play, yeah. So the thing ah. is, um, yeah, Cosmo had a set standard. they were very serious when they actually came on to the court and it was very good for me to learn discipline they used to switch sides even in that time uh, oh, switch okay. sides between uh, especially when it was windy or sunny you had to switch sides and play okay. and uh, there was selvaraj uncle krishna uh, krishna uncle also had played a lot of doubles but uh, krishna murthy t krishna murthy mm. selvaraj uncle um murli uncle you know mithun's dad they all yeah. i mean they all used to make me literally cry uh, every day just because they'll hit drop shots on top of drop shots and and at that time i was 13 14 years old i was a little overweight could not move to the boss i'll just be really very unhappy <laughs> but uh once you keep playing them you start to realize you start to get better hey, they used to beat me 6162 6, slowly it became 6475 and then slowly sometimes i would take a set so that's what my dad was looking for just that mm-hmm. that change you know you keep on playing but then you will get you will get there it's no it's a slow mm-hmm. process but it will get there and in fact the first court where uh, <laughs> selvaraj uncle's dad he used to they're very particular you know you cannot give easy points mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. you know <laughs> when you're 12 years old and you're getting really shouted at literally they will call you names <laughs> you know <No>. animal names <laughs> so it is a, it's it's really a good learning experience you know it well <laughs> yeah <laughs> of course because i mean you are consistent i mean you are always consistent you are crafty so i think you are there almost there i think ganesh had a big struggle to get them <laughs> <laughs> correct 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 but when uh, like you know uh, playing with them i think made a big influence in your game right because you are a very crafty player you don't miss i mean you are so strong mentally so you think that was a ma- played a major role in uh, oh, 100% player, uh, 100% playing in cosmo really helped me a lot because one thing is uh, they'll immediately pinpoint your weaknesses and attack your weaknesses Mm. so you really learn that if you don't attack their weaknesses you're right. you're done so you really learn to analyze the game very well early on at 14 13 14 years old i could when i go into a court i could actually figure out okay mm. the forehand is weaker than the backhand or um whatever the second serve she can't hit uh, uh, she cannot hit it to my back whatever it is i could figure it out just because of cosmo because cosmo mm. um members really taught me that you know yeah and uh, of course i mean so after that when you go and play under 14 uh, girls i mean uh, they don't know what's coming and you know and you know exactly what's going on so it was like correct. you know correct 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 it, it so didn't help at all play them correct. it was always uh, like you know you were a bit on the heavier side but you had no trouble playing matches because you were hurting them all the time and they didn't even have a chance to hurt you <laughs> so uh, not just that it's also because you know i was hitting so much length most of my shots were yeah. consistent and lengthy 
so nobody could do unless they had a drop shot or they had something extraordinary you're not going to beat me in a rally at that age i mean i i, I was ready to hit 500 balls so what what do you you had to do something different and at that age nobody has the guile to be able to do all that you know and you are also familiar with the drops coming in between playing members and girls don't uh, they're not that smart right. or that kind of finesse that that age correct correct so, correct and uh, also you had uh, mentioned right like when you played them and you were losing early which again makes a big influence on how you handle your losses later right correct correct no i mean the early. thing that um i uh, i'm a big uh, believer in this that sometimes i have a major problem uh when kids are getting too good too early because especially when they're 10 or 11 years old and they're really good i am kind of more worried rather than very happy about those things across the board even in my academy india many people come and ask me oh my god my my daughter is 10 years old look at her oh she's looking very good but mm. my concern is that you know if you see success too early it's very hard for you because this road is not easy let me tell you at 17 18 you're not going to have the same success you're having now exactly <laughs> you can be 100% sure of that so when they are young it's better for them to lose more and to get kind of beaten more because that's when you learn and you as you said you uh, i mean i hated losing but i had to deal with it and come Absolutely. up with solutions you know right. it's not like i loved losing i hated losing mm-hmm. but you have to come up with those solutions and that uh, you're absolutely right that you know cosmo is the one that uh, <laughs> showed me you Shaped know you. <laughs> <laughs> yes you know i mean tennis is a, so you know you so you find yeah. solutions i mean that's what tennis the game of tennis is i mean if you correct. don't find solutions on the court there's nobody to help correct. you or guide you you correct. have to figure it out correct so, you know unless correct. you lose you're not willing to go that way correct and so, the, the I mean, most important thing also in cosmo is the standard of tennis was fairly high yeah. you know it's yeah. not like uh, it was um, you know uh, club tennis you can't really yeah. actually say it's club tennis i mean yeah. the kind of people that played there were fairly high quality yeah. tennis and so yeah. you know yeah. as a 13 14 year old i don't think i could have gotten a better you know better practice area in uh, as such and be able to play that many sets against people yeah and uh, actually i will share a line which uh, ganesh uh, you know talks about you and uh, which actually you no know, i think he very well said about you he said your resilience and tenacity to overcome odds is commendable <laughs> so i mean it it's uh, you know my uh, what i would like to know is how did that develop or it was just that's you that's person. completely my dad so oh, great yeah my my dad um, you know me my dad and i spent a lot of time especially uh, when i was starting to play itf tournaments we have traveled to brunei jakarta we went to um, you know uh, all over europe when i was playing itf tournaments and stuff he kind of groomed me into that because he always say you should n- never give up never give up this is how he was all the time in the beginning you um, when you are 12 13 you really don't know how which way you should go you know which path you should take yeah. and stuff and at that time his influence uh behind just telling me to keep fighting i think that's what gave me whatever i have even in re- life even in life it uh, tennis is so very similar to life in many ways i feel i know it's a little yes. philosophical but it's a fact because in life you are alone many times and you have to uh, you have to figure out you have to troubleshoot and you have to figure out what's the next path you're going to take and um, unless you stay positive my dad is the was the most positive guy i had ever met i mean um, and i think that's where i get I, i can't look at something and be negative i'm just not a negative person I'm always positive you know so i think that completely came from my dad and uh, during the, those formative years those years between 12 and 16 I think uh, I was very lucky to be in his uh, you know guidance because that he could spare a time for you and uh, be with you I think that made a big <laughs> difference yeah. so. so one very interesting thing about my dad is he's a, he was a lawyer but he'll always find time for tennis 
okay <laughs> so for tennis he always found time and when people used to ask him what uh, sir what do you do for a living he'll say i'm a tennis coach and then my mom will egg him from behind and oh yeah, yeah i'm also a lawyer <laughs> <laughs> so you know he he heart of hearts he believed he was a sports person first he was a you know he, he really enjoyed this way more than he enjoyed his law profession and and that's a fact you know that is no no to be you it. mentioned the uh, love for tennis and i think uh, i mean seeing him i think automatically you became like that so your love yes. for tennis remained like you know the results yes. and the other things were coming Correct. much later you know love for the sport was primary which is uh, so anyway you're talking about uh, your father so are you the a, a similar parent like your father like the parenting uh, um, like, you know the way he approaches things <laughs> yeah i i try to It's be a- more or less like him every day actually when i'm teaching sahana i'm like if i can be half what he was <laughs> that's all that matters because like morning and evening he took us every single day okay there were maybe a few days that he couldn't because of he had to be stuck at court but majority of the time he was there and i'm like there are days when i'm so tired i'm like i don't want to take sahana right now but i don't i have i don't remember a day when my dad said i'm tired today i'm not going to take you <laughs> it didn't exist for him you know and uh, so if i can be half what he was i think that that's a great goal to have you know I mean, I'm sure uh, you know he would have been. He was always proud of you, and I'm sure uh, you know listening to you, you know, give him so much credit and compliments. Yes. And I'm sure you know, he must be. Yeah, he, he and, definitely uh, knew that I I appreciated him. I never uh, held back on that because uh, without him, I'm I'm nowhere. You know, to yeah, have that kind nice. of a thought process, and also Kambito is a very conservative uh, society in many ways. Correct. Correct. Um. there are people there actually there were people who actually told my dad he was looking for sponsors when i was 18 or 19 years old and uh, we were always looking for sponsors by the way okay but when i was 18 19 he was asking somebody and there was a person who actually i know the person I'm not going to mention it but um he basically told my dad It, she's somebody else's property why are you spending time uh, or money on this person because she's going to get married and going to go somewhere else so why are you doing this so those kind of things um he, he, of course he didn't take it uh, take it seriously and he you know he was absolutely fine it's just that uh, to go through all the years, you need somebody who's like a pillar like that and so strong to be able to you know go through that entire system without any problems because you need one person who's uh, uh who has the guts to do it who has the courage to go through all that you know yeah i mean uh, when you're talking about uh, how the, the conservative society i mean i i come from polachi so i mean, i can relate to it those Correct. times i mean Correct. people have asked uh, me how come i became a, a tennis coach and right. people have asked uh, my father பைய இப்போ விளையாட்டு தானுங்களா ஐ மீன் நோ தட் கைண்ட் ஆஃப் திங் நோ சோ ஐ கேன் இமேஜின் ஐ மீன் வாட் யுவர் பேரண்ட்ஸ் யூ நோ ஹேட் டு ஹியர் ஐ மீன் யூ வுட் ஹேவ் ஹர்ட் மச் பட் தி பேரண்ட்ஸ் வுட் ஹேவ் ஹர்ட் फ्रॉम ரிலேட்டிவ் फ्रेंड्स தோ வெல் விஷர்ஸ் பட் தே மைட் நாட் நோ ஹேவ் அப்ரிஷியேட்டட் திஸ் கரெக்ட் எனிவே ஐ மீன் ஆன் தி சேம் லைன்ஸ் ஐ மீன் அட் தட் பாயிண்ட் அட் தட் பீரியட் ஆஃப் டைம் வித் திஸ் கைண்ட் ஆஃப் சொசைட்டி ஐ மீன் யூ அட் ஏஜ் ஆஃப் 18 எ गर्ल फ्रॉम கோயம்புத்தூர் with this background decides to go to i mean go to luxembourg and live there i mean it's like a you know you cannot say a new path it when it's like you know you broken everything you know the door Correct. the you know, walk through the sea mountain everything it's like rajini khan i am very tiny very i mean you found no, no. A, a path no, out of no because because my dad um uh, so there's a few things one is i at that age i had one uh, national titles like three or four years in a row i was a national champion from 92 to 96 straight i had not lost a match in india at yeah. that time so, so there was nothing else for me to do in india as such because there were no pro tournaments at that time they had one challenger and that too came after 97 i think 97 onwards we started having one challenger in india so there was no tournaments really <clears throat> and if i wanted to play anything internationally i had to go out of india 
so the option at that time was i had just finished 12th do i go to a university in the us or do i play pro tennis so uh, at least for women it's totally different than the guys in, in terms of college tennis i had not seen one indian person who had come out of the college system in america and made it we had a lot of girls who went from us Bended. i mean went mm-hmm. from india to us and took a scholarship they did well in their colleges but nobody took up pro tennis when they were 20 or 21 nobody did yeah so right. at that time we had to make a call if we go the usual route that everybody is going or go and play pro tennis and do something crazy like this yeah. and uh, and then figure this out uh, as and how we go you know so all of us were convinced i didn't know if i i, I also i mean going to college i could have gone in coimbatore too i could have gone in india i could have gone anywhere so that i felt like it could it can happen at a later time but the next 3 4 years was very important for for me as a girl to do something you know so um up to that particular year when i was playing wimbledon juniors there was a coach who was there in this thing and he gave me an option to come and train in luxembourg oh, so that's okay. where it started Uh, the, uh, interesting thing is that particular guy uh, within a week the whole thing was dissolved and he ran away to england <laughs> okay oh. so okay. i arrived there my mom we sold a land my dad sold a land uh, indian bank at that time was helping me a lot indian oh. bank is the only uh, big company that came forward and um, okay. they helped me a lot there's actually a sports uh, uh, officer called okay. dv sundar he actually helped me a lot so okay. we got some funds from them my dad sold a land my mom and i <laughs> we go to luxembourg okay. within one week it's done so we are stuck we don't we don't know i mean coming back to we told everybody bye bye everybody is oh, like oh. thinking we are staying there for one year at least and stuff <laughs> and now how will it look if we came back you know okay. uh well th- that was always an option but just then we found uh, there was an indian family that really helped us there as a venkatraman oh. they really helped us they put us up in their house for like two months two and a half months we stayed in their house and while i was trying to figure it out there was a swedish tennis school that um, that offered to train me a little bit okay. so that's how it happened my mom was supposed to be with me for a year mm. but uh that didn't work out because um mm. to stay in an apartment meant uh, 50000 rupees a month mm-hmm. for two of us yeah. and then there was utility it was too complicated mm-hmm. and uh, if i stayed yeah. by myself with a family that uh, yeah. worked out okay it's like 10000 rupees then so we mm-hmm. basically yeah. made that call and uh, the coaches were amazing these uh, yeah. i I'm, i'm many of the things you think it's going the wrong way but it just so happened it was yeah and uh, that is something you know you have to have uh, somebody looking over you a little bit and um, they were so they were uh, they were so sincere and on top of it there's the estes tennis school they were just also um uh, i was so uh, safe that's the most important thing right so my mom saw how good these coaches were how how amazing in those two years i never mm-hmm. felt unsafe ever you know mm-hmm. not at one time uh in the tennis school and this thing so and the family i stayed with they were super conservative so my mom was very happy with that very whole <laughs> <laughs> and then so that's how you know it all turned out but one thing so, is my mom did not foresee or my dad they all did not foresee my travel in in uh, europe, europe at that time <laughs> <laughs> if they had known my travel experiences and everything they would not have <laughs> me to stay on my own yeah we'll certainly uh, we'll talk about that so i mean when you're talking about your coach uh, leaving as you, you know went to luxembourg what struck me was you are left with the tennis court there also to <laughs> yourself <laughs> coach you know you had a court <laughs> i had court <laughs> <laughs> yes yes that's true <laughs> no but uh, but still i mean okay uh, you found a family to stay but culturally and uh, you being a vegetarian the food and everything would have been such a big challenge right i mean uh, I, i mean i heard you said uh, one week we ate only potatoes and things like that right yeah, mean, to yeah, manage yeah. your yeah. europe at that so, time is not the europe now i mean now mm, um uh, i mean last year when i went to paris i was uh, wow 
everybody spoke english this this thing has been happening for years ago nobody spoke english you also know also currency no those days every country had a different currency yes it had and a different currency the, the the interesting thing is all these challenges and 10000 dollars is what i played in the beginning all the 10000 mm-hmm. dollar satellite tournaments they were held in some small club in middle of nowhere they were not in big cities at all so in these clubs you are basically stuck with what is available there there you don't have a car you had come by train there you don't have a car you are basically depending on the official accommodation to take you everywhere so yeah. uh, whatever is there in the club is what you can eat and uh, the club will make like five or six dishes a day and most of them were meat or you know definitely uh, at that time i feel if i had been a at least eaten one thing maybe chicken or maybe mm. fish i don't know my life would have been a lot simpler now looking Easy back at it correct it's just that it's very hard to start when you're 18 19 and you know i yes. never liked it L- let's put it this way i never liked it also so, uh, the non veg if you had started in india with all the masala and correct. fry and everything correct. the taste would have been different you could correct. acquire that taste in europe correct. you go straight away you start tasting meat it's exactly. very complicated Exactly. Then you're not going to that's like right. it. That's right. So maybe that's you could right. have. I mean, you didn't foresee it. So that's. I think your dad. Uh, that's the only thing he missed out. Uh, <laughs> Correct. <laughs> for going to Europe. Correct. I mean, Correct. Because he was no. a guy, so he didn't realize. He probably did, but it was. It was a very this thing call for him. He, I mean, um, it was a tough call. He was also in conflict, yes. whether yes. to. tell me to eat or not to eat he was uh, i think he was borderline if 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 i had you just eaten, told him straight up that yeah. i i have to eat this he would not have said mm. anything but uh, you know uh, that that was a tough call because uh, belgium uh, that's the one i wrote in the book was uh, belgium mm. uh, whole week i lost about 5 or 6 uh, kilos right there because <laughs> nothing else to eat but then i don't know if you um if, if you know there's this uh, travel cooker i okay. found a small okay. one mm. it's a small one mm. and you can cook anything it's not just a rice cooker you can cook anything within it's oh, like okay. a uh, it's like a hot pot i used okay. to travel with that after a while yeah. because then i'll take some rice oh, or some pasta yeah. and and uh, mix it with some sauce i used to do that <laughs> in my hotel room in, in because you don't get anything otherwise So yeah. what all I've done? I mean, I carry yeah. rice and <laughs> and dal with But, you. But uh, I think because of all that experience, only you're writing the food blog now, no? <laughs> <laughs> Life yeah. teaches you, literally. <laughs> no, I mean it's a fact because see nowadays, like my mom, many times um, she's a strong believer of being vegetarian, and okay. I get it. You know, I get it. But the thing is. today's vegetarian people are totally different because they get protein they get other things you are mm. you're slightly more well off you go to restaurants where you you can find tofu you can that's not the way i was the europe that i know and the travel that i did i didn't have money yeah. i couldn't go to restaurants uh, all the time and eat i didn't have yeah. that kind of money so i did not get the nutrition i needed to get as a professional tennis player mm. <laughs> if i was a traveler just tourist it's a totally different thing yeah but yeah. i had to go and play matches against people who were built way more stronger than me and know? on clay <laughs> and yes. on clay yes yes so you you're grinding every point exactly exactly and also i think uh, for your parents should have been even uh, because as it is to let a girl stay alone in europe was a big decision at the mala you start eating meat na i mean they are going to get nailed back home <laughs> correct 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 so they had to protect themselves in some form <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no. talking about yeah uh, talking about no, staying in europe I, one yeah, thing yeah, yeah, they known uh, the kind of perils i would have faced when i was actually uh, traveling uh, almost imagine me as a backpacker in europe I think they would have uh, asked me to come back. You know, most of the stuff <laughs> I never told them because uh, <laughs> yeah, they, would have, God, they would have been worried sick. <laughs> Correct. 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 You are not born. This is not born. That if you are not married, no. I mean, self-preservation you learn very quickly. So that's mm-hmm. another thing that you learn is okay. After 8 p.m. or 9 p.m., I'm never traveling again. 
you know because most of the issues come after you travel at 9 p.m at night you had a bad so, experience in rotterdam right rotterdam station yes 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 so those kind of things it's it's uh, uh it's it opens your mind up and say you know what never ever again am i going to do that you you just learn that you know i sometimes have a racket in my hand just <laughs> if somebody comes in this thing i'm i'm going to you know hit him but uh, uh sometimes i feel it's a miracle that i came out of that without any issues you know it's definitely in all these things you need to have somebody watching over you you know yeah yeah it's true it's true but okay i mean uh, the the other part when you were staying alone in europe after being with parents for so long i mean there there was a certain level of uh, independence which you didn't have earlier right correct so you no know, did you like after one point did you feel you're missing your family or you thought okay i have independence now like for example you could do your hair the way you want which you couldn't have done back home <laughs> you know the Simple funny example. thing is i was just so focused on tennis i basically um i never went out i was all, always so tired as well you know most of the time our oh, trainings okay. were pretty hard and stuff and um i i never went out of bounds at at any time of course i liked my independence i i didn't mind mm-hmm. the independence but i definitely missed my my family there was no two ways about it even now in fact i i live in us I really miss my family because you know when you go come only when you come to India you get to feel like all my first cousins all my you know yeah. uh, aunts and uncles we have such a great bond it's very hard to you know be away from that yeah. but for me at that age I was like okay I'm here on a mission okay. yes mm-hmm. and this is the only thing that can get me to where I want to get so I'm going to sacrifice whatever it takes that's where I was true because that you i mean unless you have a single minded uh, correct i think uh, before you uh, the only person from india who did some, some similar uh, thing was vasu right i mean you know vasu correct uh, correct okay he was a, like you know boy girl that is a big difference but correct. did any anywhere uh, like you know vasu influence you or you had a so kg no vasu yeah, yeah. Well, right yes actually vasu was uh, the one who um, who gave me some lot of advice about uh, paris about fr- french tennis in general french t- uh, in france they had um, these prize money tournaments that you can actually go and play uh, prize money tournaments and it is held over 2 3 days oh, and you can make oh. some money off it he also gave me a huge contact who i'm still in touch with uh, there's another tennis player called mark simeno he used to live in paris so mm-hmm. Vasu is the one who introduced me to them and I used to stay with them all the time whenever I was in French Open everything I used to stay with them they were like uh, Mark and his wife Annelies oh my god they have helped me a lot i mean uh, so Vasu definitely told me where all you know wh- wh- how the system works in France and you know he gave me this contact that was uh, amazing i mean uh, <laughs> many there was one time especially even my book had written um i was uh, stuck i mean i had just arrived i got a last minute entry into french open qual- qualifying because of somebody ha- had withdrawn i had flown from portugal to paris that morning and this was not the age of internet to go and do a, this thing a, for a hotel reservation on a phone and all so you arrive and there are no hotel rooms in whole of paris not a single one because of euro cup or something like that Oh okay. Oh, so okay. Mm-hmm. I called Mark. I said Mark. I didn't even ask him. It's like Niru, do you want to come? I said yes, I do want to come. Oh, otherwise I would be I'm waiting. I'm waiting. <laughs> <laughs> so those Please kind of ask. things uh, really I had to be lucky. Yeah, you you mentioned uh, about your book, right? I mean you the book Moonballer you wrote. Uh what was the inspiration to write the book? Who or what? I mean it's a um, you will share you or you just uh, wanted to no, many share people your have asked me about it because uh, many of my experiences are fairly unique so many people have asked me about writing a book and everything and i yeah. felt like you know it was time for me to put uh, all the facts down and and uh, also a publisher came along at just that right time and so you know the minute those kind of people come into the picture then they you have to get it done you, you cannot moving, like yeah. procrastinate anymore yeah. so actual yeah. book writing happened in 2 to 3 months but okay. 
I procrastinated for two years. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> then when I when you get a publisher, you just get it done. You plan to write any more? Yes, I do. On parenting um, or uh, book or yeah, or, parenting, uh, uh, parenting, uh, cookbook. I have a few uh, yeah. that I want to write. Um, but parenting, I, I'm holding back. Even though I thought I was going to uh, publish it within a couple of years, I'm waiting on it because I'm also a parent right now. I feel like mm. uh, these kind of experiences I can add to Wait it for a few more years. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So because I think uh, you mentioned, like you know, because about parenting, how parents, uh, you know, either too protective or uh, you know, too uh, like you know, expectation levels are high. So Correct. I think uh, you know you you need to speak on that. I'm sure a lot of people listening would love to hear. Uh, <laughs> yeah, in yeah. fact, I do want to mention this about parent parenting in in general is in we have an academy in California, right? So my brother yeah. and I we run it, and um, uh, te- we've been running it for 15 to 17 years now. And um, the thing is, over the time. uh probably i would say about 6 7 years ago and all i had some kids who i think um uh, and even now we do have some, uh, some good quality kids but in the past what has happened is many of the parents get uh, they want results too quickly i i know yes, that sir. this is this is the <laughs> thing across the board across even in india anywhere else but at the end of the day what ends up happening is um they uh about seven or eight kids who would who i would say would have played division 1 college or maybe pro had the potential to play pro mm. but the parents were the reason that the kids couldn't go further and i i know i'm putting a lot of pressure on parents here but end of the day it's a very very thin line you know True. um and uh, it is a it is a fact because you want the results so early so you start to switch things Oh, is, is this coach good? Mm. That no. Yeah. I mean, if some, if you have a trust in one person, just stick to them, and you know, it will take time, eight to ten right. years to make a champion. Yes. If a person has the credentials and if they are sincere enough, just stick to them. You know. So this like is. This yeah. is one of my, my friends uh, you know from college friends so whose son plays play, used to play yeah. tennis and uh, you know he used to come to me and uh, so he used to tell me he said bala parenting is tough tennis parenting is beyond my uh, you know imagination so i outsourced it to you <laughs> so he was like very because he was a tt player himself so as being a player i think the parents if they have played a competitive sport Correct. an individual sport i think it's easier to uh, relate right yes so always, i agree with over expectations are always uh, there so because in california i used to deal with some parents they um, they are exceptionally bright people they are uh, like ceos or maybe phd's very very smart people but what ends up happening is they start to equate a beats b b beats c so a has to beat c you know doesn't work like that in sport you know <laughs> i mean i don't know if you remember there's this uh, there's this guy i think ivan lendl has talked about he used to be number 1 in the world but there's one guy he'll always lose to nobody knows why <laughs> but he has never beaten that guy you know so there will be people like that and sport has that's the beauty of sport is there's so many variables mm. and we have to kind of you know think about it's okay you know it's it's it, it is what it is we just have to learn from those experiences and i think uh, my dad uh, was phenomenal in that is he has never i have never come out of a match i could have played i have played some bad matches don't think i have not i mean there are matches where, where i've played really bad minute i come out he has never raised his voice and never uh put me down mm. he he is clearly disappointed i know from his face is is disappointed in what but he'll never say something like how could he have done this this kind of stuff will never come out of his mouth not once and i think that made a made a huge impact for me you know because end of the day at that time the child needs a hug Yeah. The child lost, needs a hug at that time as a parent like when yeah. Sana lost a match <laughs> match she should have won. So that, those are the things that work in my brain. That time she needs me as a mom. She does not need me as a coach. True. So True. that is what is important for a tennis parent to have empathy 
put yourself in the shoes of that kid no child wants to go on the court and i mean there are some kids who want to tank but most of them don't want to tank okay it's a different story yeah yes so when they're coming out and they've played a hard match just give them the love they want we can mm-hmm. talk about the tennis specifics later you know so that's uh, one advice i would give them right away yeah so i'm sure a lot of parents are listening to this so that's why i mean no i thought uh, you're the best person to speak about it because you know you came up the hard way and uh, and then you are now you know parenting so you know for me coming from you you cannot dispute because it's pure experience right now <laughs> right and you're trying to emulate your father though Correct. however hard it Correct. is Correct. you're making an effort which Correct. is nice because all Correct. because a lot of things it's easy to say right but uh, in that emotion when things happen Correct. you know you lose control <laughs> correct and end of the day i mean the other thing that i would like to mention is by the time we've come to a match situation it's too late anyway <laughs> match is a hit or miss the thing you should be more worried about is practices exactly yeah okay. the the process the rituals all the stuff that you do on an everyday basis that's way important than a match correct. match is too late i mean whatever yeah. you've learned in practice is already too late by the time you've come to a match the match is a by product i mean what you correct. do in practice what count so correct it's like how you prepare for an exam correct. you don't read and study and practice correct. you're not going to do the test well correct correct so i mean uh, you you traveled a lot in india right playing the eight year tournament yes. and, uh, so you know that experience uh, i'm sure you know helped you playing the, the pro tour like different surfaces different uh, organizers like dushan dev i mean <laughs> <laughs> he was such a cool cat though i love dushan dev he was <laughs> he could run a tournament with no stress <laughs> even if there's no tennis court he could do a tournament <laughs> uh no i mean ai uh, the all uh, all the entire in- indian circuit is what made me i i actually believe that i'm a big and believer. unfortunately we don't have that now i mean uh, yes. i'm sure you're aware of it i mean i've i've mentioned it many times uh, that that is number one thing that has to come back the state ranking tournaments the zonal uh, they used to have central india is to have south, south india west india yes. No. yeah yes south india champion I'll, i'll interrupt you one minute one second here yeah. that when you talk about south west india i think i was playing under 14 or something i remember you uh, like your dad had carried you to watch matches i mean they like gilango oh. nandan nilia somnath they were all playing it's a big tournament in cosmo and oh. uh, your father has like you know i remember uh, i don't remember which match i think ilias was playing nandan i think ilias beat nandan and like uh, under 14 like you know i was like oh, watching nandan and ilias play Right. you were with your father uh, like in his arms oh, so i okay. guess uh, your love for tennis uh, started with before you started even stepped then. on the court no <laughs> no I, i remember some of it because not not at that particular tournament but many tournaments um because i was hanging out all the time nandan ilyas like uh, ramesh my cousin kg and uh, yeah, suresh yeah. they were always there so i used to hang out with all these people when i was like about 6 or 7 years old and when i was about 8 or 9 years old i had to umpire matches and if i umpired i'll get a cool drink right mm, so fun yeah <laughs> so so the amount of cool drinks i have drunk oh my god the cold spot and limka and thumbs Correct. up i have drunk is just uh, oh my god um, i literally used to mix all these drinks and drink <laughs> okay uh, uh, before we continue uh, niru uh, i'll just stop this and we will reconnect again because uh, you no know, it's uh, almost an hour now Oh, so okay. we will uh, i'll end Got it and then i'll come back again yeah? got it got it please wait guys uh, please wait uh, we'll be back soon we'll just uh, you know close this and uh, rejoin in few minutes we'll be back uh, soon we just finished uh, we are almost close to one hour of uh, conversation with uh, nirupma so we had to end the chat because we had to complete the recording process and we are waiting for neeru to uh, join us uh, please hold on i'll just ask her to come back
waiting for nirpma nirpma was uh, you know we last uh, we were talking about was uh, you now how uh, she felt uh, she feels uh, <coughs> the playing the indian circuit uh, groomed her and helped her uh, you know do well when she was playing at the wta so we'd like to hear uh, you know more of uh, her experience uh, playing the indian uh, circuit I think uh, she's having some uh, trouble rejoining. Please uh, hold on. I'll just uh, connect with her. Yeah, Nirpma is. Uh, she should be now. Yeah, Nirpma. Yeah. Hi. 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 Come back. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, is it, we are talking about uh, the Indian tournaments and uh, the state ranking tournaments, right? Yeah, yes. please continue. <laughs> no, no, I mean I feel like that is a it's a huge thing that we are missing out on right now. Uh, I feel like that's what made me uh, a better player, and I'll tell you why. One is, uh, of course, the different surfaces, as you were mentioning. <laughs> Some of the surfaces were very, very questionable. Um, Non-existent. Some of, the, some of the grass courts. It cannot be named. <laughs> no, no, I will name it. I have no problems naming it. Uh, I remember Jaipur Nationals. The grass court was so bad that I was practicing on the concrete court next to it to get the feel, because if I went on, there were literally Born there were balls down. where it would bounce and it could go forehand or backhand. <laughs> So it's uh, your uh, how good your reflexes are that will work. So uh, that is one thing. The other side of it that made a big difference for me is all these state ranking tournaments had different age groups: twelves, fourteen, sixteens, eighteens, and even women. So there were tournaments where I'll play literally three events: I'll play fourteens, sixteens, and women, or I'll play like sixteens, eighteens, and women's. So. Uh, at 16, I was able to compete with. Uh, I knew I could compete with uh, somebody who's a, a woman player, you know. So those kind of things um, really gave me the confidence, and it also helped my game get better. That's number one. Number two, so many different matches, so many different players you get to play. Number three, doubles. So yeah. there are so many things that that came. And number four, I mean, people don't realize it. the social aspect of it you know yeah. you make so many friends you are hanging out in a tennis atmosphere it's there's nothing wrong with being in a tennis atmosphere and and really discussing tennis i mean uh, it's, it's definitely a big plus for me it was a huge huge thing and uh, i'm i still hope they can they can revive this whole, this whole thing i i totally believe that it helped me a lot yeah mom um, like uh, moving on from the the uh, indian circuit to the the pro tour i mean uh, like you, your movement wasn't your strength but you no know, you had you could last like you know mentally Correct. physically you, you know you could last you're yeah. very uh, crafty uh, and then slowly you know you started uh, you know started playing at the net more Correct. so that you, that came because so you made a change or because you're playing more doubles by then and then kind of influenced or uh, So one uh, one main thing that happened was when I was in Luxembourg I actually played a tour event that used to come to our club itself it oh, used okay. to be an invitational tournament but then it became a pro uh, pro event and uh, I was actually playing a, a girl that I know really well her name is Laura Golarsa she is a serve and volleyer and the courts were super fast i mean uh, oh, okay. you literally had only two ball rallies I mean, there were not even rallies, and she was a servant volleyer. So, if I had to win a point, I had to be at the net before her. Correct. So, uh, it's just being adaptive, just trying to adapt and trying. And I won that match. I beat a servant volleyer. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, literally, I had, chip, I had to chip and charge. I had to do things that I had never done before. But we had to do it because the court's uh, surface was so fast. and our, actually because i knew that it was fast in our own uh, home court we were practicing my coach and i we were practicing uh, how to come in a lot more and uh, mm. uh, th- those are the things that gave me confidence okay i am more a baseline player but if i have to do it i have to do it and um, mm. uh, there are many people who are worse at it than me <laughs> so you know <laughs> so, 
so then you start to uh, and of course playing doubles helped a lot playing doubles really helped the volleys a lot and gain a lot of uh, confidence in that and end of the day when you go into pro circuit you cannot dep- unless you're a phenomenal mover you cannot depend on playing defense uh, yeah. i don't have the legs for defense at all so mm-hmm. i have to finish the point faster than then what uh, you know i can't last the whole thing so i had to come in more and in that uh, my coach david omira towards the end uh, towards the last 3 4 years of my tennis career david uh, was the one who who helped me especially when i had those good mm-hmm. results in australia I'll so his happened. game yeah. style is more aggressive and he really oh. uh, helped me gain more pop on the serve um come in after hitting a good shot come in and finish it off at the net so those kind of things uh, i progressed onto that but if i didn't have the consistency that i had as a young kid i could not have progressed down to that you know yeah. you can always fall back on the consistency but if you didn't have that you would have had a Correct. i would have had a much tougher time you need to have a solid game to Correct. stay in the point i mean without that Correct. uh Correct. and uh, like you know you mentioned about uh, legs you didn't have that kind of legs right you know looking back uh, you think because you're so strong mentally i mean you know you're so crafty and uh, you even made the adaptation going to the net learning to play on fast court okay. with all these changes why do you think uh, like you know it stopped what stopped you from breaking top 100 because you were you were there like 130 140 you're almost um, there i don't think it has anything to do with anything it's just that in the um in the key places where i need like many of those top tournaments i actually played about 4 years of qualifying of all the grand slams i must have grand played slam. 16 16 grand slam qualifiers okay. out of which i was in the final round of qualifying at least 8 to 10 times okay by the time i came to the third round i didn't have a massage therapist i didn't have all oh, that okay. I, mm-hmm. I, i didn't I, I couldn't think beyond that support because I didn't have a coach. Yeah, team. I yeah. didn't have a support team. I didn't have a coach with me. I think oh, that's okay. the only that's reason big. why I couldn't make because there were enough players who I have been beaten beating, beating consistently who was who in the top 50 or to, top 75. Okay. I just didn't have the means at that time to uh, and I didn't realize it. If 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 we had realized it at that point we would have done something about it. Maybe mm-hmm. sold another okay. land or something. <laughs> i'm sure my dad would have come up with something but uh, but it, it, that was the bottom line you know so oh, okay. in, in those kind of um, top level tournaments when it's uh, and and many of them were three That's sets different. Yeah, yeah many of them were three sets 6 2 in the third 6 4 in the third yeah. and go and sign up as lucky loser i'll be the last lucky loser spot <laughs> no no chance of getting in so uh, i think uh, i think if i had gotten a little more support at that time because Uh, yes i was slow and all but at that time it didn't matter between me getting to mm-hmm. top 100 and 130 no, because you were there i mean you were beating yeah. i think you beat lucic and uh, no players at that level yeah. uh, already yeah. You know, right yeah and uh, um, um, uh, talking about uh, um, uh, the support uh, uh, staff obviously the sponsor would have been uh, the, the funds would have been a, a key yeah. factor to decide a support team right because like you like you have like two players one is with the coach one is without a coach there is an obvious disadvantage right Correct. and at that level it's a small thing like you make a Correct. mistake in one match if you are able to fix it and go into the next match you're exactly. set exactly you exactly. repeat the same mistake and that person punishes you that's the end of the Correct. tournament Correct. Yeah, so, coach Correct. plays a major role in tennis because everybody else has a coach. <laughs> Correct. If nobody Correct. has a coach, then it's fair enough. It's a fair <laughs> game. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Correct. So, sponsors. I mean, yeah. Coming back to the sponsors part, you had the uh, real difficulty. I remember once. Uh, I don't know if you you remember. It was in Delhi, and I had come for the inter railways, and we used to practice every day in the morning. And the rest of the day, you used you used to be out uh, meeting prospective sponsors. <laughs> yeah. And end of the week, I remember asking you, and you said. No, no. <laughs> I'm where I started. Zero. <laughs> I think you went even to people like Sahara, and they were big into sports at that point of time, and still, you know, no sponsors came. So the thing uh, is, how do I you? Think it, it, I think it was the bottom line was that people would help. There were many people who were helpful. They would help. They'll give me like forty thousand rupees or twenty five thousand rupees. but that's nothing when you actually right. take it it's not like a, the only per, only people who helped me sub, uh, to some extent was indian bank you know because mm-hmm. the indian rupees to the dollar was just so bad that you know uh, how much ever you convert is just probably half an airfare or one airfare mm-hmm. 
where are we going to go with with the rest you know in the beginning in the uh, in the when indian circuit was there i used to win all the most of the tournaments mm. and all that money used to go into my airfare to play itfs you know so that's where it helped but um, as far as the sponsorship is concerned i definitely think um um tamil nadu tennis association all india tennis association they all could have done a lot more i mean <laughs> i i don't have anybody that i i need to go by that system so i can be honest with it and i can tell it openly you know <laughs> i mean i you had something with img right i mean uh, some kind of a deal with img but not i think it does of money but something i had a Those deal with img but nothing came out of it except uh, me to commentate for chennai open <laughs> that's what yeah. it that way <laughs> did you get paid for that <laughs> i did get paid for that oh ah, okay fine so so but, they did sponsor uh, you that time img <laughs> for me img just started that year in india and i was almost like an experiment for them um oh, um okay. they they did try but uh, i don't think uh, they could they knew how to handle and I, i didn't get anything out of it let's put it that way i mean did you have like an apparel uh, contract or yes. something or uh, okay. adidas india helped me and i don't think that was okay. through img it was right after oh, my okay. um, um my australian open uh, performance oh, okay. at that time uh, they came forward and uh, adidas india was very helpful for sure yeah talking about uh, australian open i mean uh, no you you please uh, share your uh, you know, m- memories of uh, that win i mean you are the first indian lady to win a match in a slam in the main draw you know big moment i, would- I mean for the country Yeah it's a big moment but at that time I didn't know that I was the first one to do that and I would be the first one to do that and all I was not looking at all that I was just uh, focusing on the match uh I I guess I was down in the third set also 4-2 or something mm. I was down and then I won so um as soon as the match was over they immediately there was a lot of uh, hurry burry and they took me to the press room uh until then <laughs> I had not been to the <laughs> press conference uh, up to that point so that's when i realized okay maybe this is a big deal and um, um it, it it does feel good to create history but at the same time i i mean i had more asks of of myself you know i thought uh, i could do better than that but um um i lost in the second round after that <laughs> quite tamely but um uh, that experience itself was uh, a good uh, eye opener to see you know what top players actually go through every day <laughs> you know going going and giving press conferences and all those things <laughs> and also i remember i think uh, you had more publicity after uh, sanya had her good run in australian open in 2005 right after yes. like 6 uh, 7 years and sanya did well i think you got a uh, lot of publicity for the <laughs> match you won 8 years ago <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> and uh, like being on the tour i mean uh, some memorable matches uh, you know you would like to Um, talk about um memorable matches i mean like those kind of experiences i mean you played doubles um, with clyster and uh, when she was young yes. uh, so, i mean did you see that uh, did you think that she's going to be you know she's oh, something yeah. special at the yeah, point yeah. yeah yeah she i play when i played uh, the doubles match with her um i mean there were times that uh, she was like uh, not just times there were a lot of times in the match that she is just uh, brilliant she was just uh, clocking the ball she was her movement her her uh, everything was we knew she was going to be something you know so she definitely had a lot of brilliance in her uh, the good part about clysis is that she's actually very nice nice girl too she's not like a really a str- highly strung and you know those kind of things and all that she's a very nice girl everybody likes her on the tour no but doesn't you can very few people very few girls in general that you can say that about <laughs> in general girls are not very friendly on tour oh my god <laughs> on tour it's just uh, it was just so difficult to make friends because we are just wired differently you know we just don't uh, we don't um, we take everything personal every win or a loss is very personal to us so that person who we've lost to is enemy for life you know so 
so it, it they, i mean uh, men are so much easier they they lose a match they go hang out later on and they're fine with it i think uh, women's tour is that's why it's a lot harder than the men's tour for sure to find yeah. meeting partners uh, actually women's tour again like men you just go to the go to the venue and look at somebody and say hey, you want to hit and he says okay yeah. but yeah. Uh, women too i mean i mean women it's not easy they only fixed up with someone they'll only hit with someone it's not easy yeah. because uh, i had some experience where you no know, if you are a player and run a hitting partner correct I mean, you have yeah. you better hit i mean so i have done that so <laughs> correct, correct. <laughs> luckily i could hit so i i could know that same <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> situation exactly no but um <laughs> a couple of other matches that come to my mind are of course miriana lochich in wimbledon i played mm-hmm. her in the qualifying actually that year she her ranking had dropped so um uh, beating beating her was definitely very memorable um there was also one a uh, lot of very close matches that i've lost that come to my mind also one was uh, i had a match point against lena in vietnam mm. um okay. two years later she was number 1 in the world <laughs> but but i was uh, she was serving uh she was serving 4 5 30 40 so i had a match point uh, on my mm. return and i missed it by a couple of inches um oh. and then i lost 7 5 um i think it was a final of the challenger and then um also i had some good wins uh, in general against people who were top 50 like um Uh, Magdalena Maleva in Kuala Lumpur. Oh, okay. Um yeah, Silvia Pliske, she's a good friend of mine actually. She's from Austria. So, and uh, one of the other big matches that people ask me about is uh, Serena and Venus. Uh we played that them is. in in uh, Australian okay. Open doubles first round. <laughs> so, there was like 5000 people and um, i think the the biggest problem was not actually playing them i think uh, the whole uh, crowd, crowd and mm. um, just just the whole thing you get so scared that you're going to lose badly <laughs> so, okay. forget about winning forget about upsetting them you know you're just going in there and just trying to hold the racket in your hand <laughs> the crowd intimates uh, intimates no it intimates yes. you yes yes so in a big stadium and a lot of people yeah, yeah i know correct is, uh, that's that kind <laughs> of if you do it few times then i guess uh, you get used to it <laughs> yes exactly and my partner served a second serve uh, to serena and i saw a ball almost like come and hit my face <laughs> <laughs> it went directly to the fence you know oh, okay. she hit it you had to save your life <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so those kind of things i mean no uh, and uh, okay you had a very good career and then like you know you got married you settled down and after sahana was born i mean you made a comeback right i mean i think you were the first uh, right. you know player to play commonwealth uh, for mm-hmm. india first mother so what was the like you know your motivation to come back and uh, and play or you already had thought that okay i will come back after uh, a child i actually made a comeback because <laughs> i was teaching a lot of there were a lot of people at that time 2010 2008 and many times i found that i was more motivated than the person i was teaching <laughs> you were pumped up than the kids <laughs> yes. and i felt that was so sad because this is it was so frustrating for me you know because when you're on the court and the coach is more motivated than the trainee there's something wrong with the whole situation you know True. and that's why these days when i teach it has to be uh, you know the kid must want it otherwise i'm not going to be there you know <laughs> because those days when you really had to do it just just for the heck of it those days are gone i will only teach somebody if they want it you know and it was that kind of a time frame when i felt like oh my god if i played i think i can do better than this <laughs> you know? i'm and, still good enough <laughs> yes and you know at that time we also had uh, one of our uh, um this guy uh, arun arun uh, prakash he used to come and uh, mm. he was teaching yeah. in our academy in uh, okay. in us lft yes very talented guy so he yeah. and i we used to play some mixed doubles tournaments okay. and uh, we actually won a lot of them in our uh, vicinity we won a mm-hmm. few prize money tournaments and all so at that time i was like okay if i had to just play doubles i could do this and at, and at that particular time there was a um, a ruling from supreme court that uh non indians i mean who are having yeah. a 
this thing they couldn't play foreign passport country so, yeah. yeah so sunita rao shika obroy they all couldn't play anymore Correct. so yeah. that's when i said you know what uh, let me see if i can give this a shot and i started working out and i started uh, uh, practicing for it and you know um, i made it Mm. you mentioned uh, shika obroy there i think there was a point where you were to coach uh, like shika and uh, shika, correct. right correct correct no we were trying we were testing it out yeah. the reason why it didn't work out is my visa i was uh, still an indian citizen and okay. uh, everywhere i had to go i had to get a visa and stuff and they were american citizen they could just get on a plane oh. and go oh, okay. so okay. that might not It's work on we decided because we couldn't plan like, plan it like that and at oh, that time i could not have done it full time also because sahana was very little so there's no oh, way yeah. that i could have traveled as much travel so much them a yeah. little bit but sahana and i think they were playing uh, they were traveling and playing extensively yes. at that point yes. in time yes yes okay. yeah so i mean uh, you you i think you were in touch with uh, ankita right i mean you mentor her or, uh, no, or no. any other indian I players i really mentor her but i'm always uh, okay. following her because i know her um, and uh, she's one of those really hard working very grounded girls um, committed yeah. yes very committed and very grounded as well so i never i mean i'm i've always told her if she comes to the us she's welcome to come and you know train with me or i can do anything uh, but she doesn't play much in us at all she plays more in uh, europe and yeah. in asia yeah, yeah. correct and you are a big uh, fan of uh, play how indian players should play on uh, clay in europe right I I think you should at least get that experience once just right. because it uh, it it, it he will lose a lot <laughs> you will have you may okay. not get gain confidence from it but I think it toughens you up um yeah. I I definitely feel uh, uh clay court tennis is really good to uh teach players how to uh you know use the court the angles yeah. of the court and the set point. up the point like set the up point. the point very very yeah. good yeah. and no easy points long rallies right. yeah exactly yep and uh, like you know what do you like do you follow some of the indian girls uh, playing now like uh, i mean ankita yeah you mentioned but ankita, ankita i ankita, mentioned um, i do know I, i don't really know them at all i don't know rutuja bosle i don't know um uh, thandi karman kaur yeah. thandi is Karman-Kor, another girl yeah. i don't know most of these girls honestly because they're uh, definitely much younger and i haven't really been in the tennis uh, scene as much in india but i do follow it i i am on indian tennis daily i do follow mm. what they're up to but um, not uh, not every day results but i i do know what they're up to and i do follow you're, up you're, stuff and everything you're, yeah we are happy with uh, what indian tennis daily is uh, doing yes of course i mean uh, otherwise it's very hard to where do we where do we find uh, all this information you know true i so, mean they cover uh, i mean they have like bunch of volunteers all over the world and they correct. try and cover as many events where indians are uh, playing correct the correct. ones who are playing the futures and the challengers not the the big leagues correct. big league is easy to find <laughs> exactly you know <laughs> like there was said, one no? guy one person when i was playing there was a guy called jay krishnan do you know jay okay. krishnan no i don't know him. Okay he he's a professor in Santa Barbara or uh somewhere in um, I think Santa Barbara but he was the only man who used to collect details from all tennis results around the world and post it on his website he was the oh. only guy who would do that i mean i can't even imagine how he did it but he um he called me once in croatia I said how did you find me he's like oh i have my methods <laughs> so he um he's only one who used to report uh, scores and stuff so um it's it's awesome to have somebody i mean like then who's just doing this day in and day out it's all yeah yeah i mean it's good i mean because i mean as it is indian players are struggling for sponsors even today i mean what you experienced then i think most of them are still experiencing right Wow. you do you have any words of uh, you know advice or suggestions to the players uh, you know players like ankita prajnesh uh, you know in the currently uh, still struggling with sponsors so one thing that i always found that what we didn't do is um you all whenever you look at sponsors you always have to look at what you can also give them in return mm, you know correct. that's something <laughs> sometimes we don't think about not sometimes most of the times we don't think about it. so we have to start thinking about what can the players give in return that 
the sponsors can use like for example i don't know i i, I can't think of maybe uh, tickets to the to the grand slams or yeah. i don't know right. but you have to come up with things that you can give them as a as a uh, this thing so they can invest in you Return. there has to be some yeah. there has to be a little bit of a trade mm-hmm. that's the yeah. advice i would give you know because you can't expect somebody to just give you money like that and and where <laughs> where does it go you know there has to be yeah. some sort of this thing for Later. yeah yeah as we are speaking there was a question by uh, kapil i mean he it's, it's something for you uh, he wants to know it's some mistake you made which uh, you learned from and became a better player later is some particular uh, particular shot shot or whatever mistake i mean he says mistake so anything you can the way you played or the way you trained or uh, you know which which you corrected later and then which helped you become a better player anything um you know that's a really good question um in india we always think training super hard that you can't walk the next day is the most important <laughs> thing that's not really true you can train really effectively and train good and still not feel it the next day and you're okay that's that's the this thing it's not just training to kill yourself it's training effectively for example um we had this uh this particular scenario and i'm not going to n- mention any names yeah. but um my uh my uh, brother in law rajiv he is is a sprinter right so of course yeah if he yeah. wants to improve your speed he'll give you certain things to do he'll give you five sprints you have to do five sprints uh, uh, at this distance so if you feel that's too less for you and you end up doing 15 sprints instead of five you've given me five but i'm going to do 15 mm-hmm. do you think that's useful no it's not just because you do more doesn't mean it's good mm-hmm. you you do those five sprints because you want to get faster correct you don't do 15 sprints then you're going to get slower correct so the quality versus quantity smart in training and not <laughs> you just should not be trying to overdo things i think that is the thing that i would tell people is don't overdo to an extent that you think it's useful don't use your brains you leave it to the experts <laughs> you know sometimes there's a reason why they tell you yeah. things you know i personally um i would have uh, if i had a chance a mistake is i would do a lot of long distance i would that's why my stamina was very good i could Mm. Uh, i could run 5k 10k no problem i but fast twitch muscles doing more like mm. uh, uh sprints and doing a change of directions those kind of things if i had done more i think i would have uh you know definitely benefited from that that's the mistake i think i sh- uh, it would have helped me did uh, rajiv uh, help you in uh, you know uh, working on the speed part uh, later Yes, uh, when I tried to make the comeback, that's when he gave yeah. me a fitness program and everything to help me first gain strength so I don't get injured. You know, <laughs> you haven't done anything for a long time. You yes. need to make sure you don't get injured first. Then we can think of other things. So, so he did help me a lot uh, to get back in shape. When uh, we're playing on the tour, I mean, you used to travel extensively, right? I mean, right. I remember uh, once uh, we met in Singapore airport. and you were going from us to australia and you were on a 6 hour transit in singapore oh i mean we met the, the, i don't remember this yeah i was with uh, radhika and i was coming back uh, from singapore uh, for a, um, after a tournament in singapore okay. at the airport i saw you and you were sitting there and uh, you were already traveled like you know from us and you were heading to australia and you were on a 6 hour transit i mean alone Yeah, I mean, uh, I think uh, you must uh, talk about uh, traveling alone, long distance, the part of tennis players' life. Yeah, I mean, I, I have never flown a single business class trip ever mm. uh, when I was on tour. Okay, not one single business class. Uh, always economy, and um, I mean, it was just uh, for me to fly is uh, a luxury at that point. You know. uh flying singapore airlines was a luxury oh this is pretty good <laughs> you you're in good shape i mean it's not europe where you have to climb uh, about two three ch- staircases with your bags up and down um <laughs> and walk <laughs> you know, after that 
I mean, Singapore airport is 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 first yeah, class. You know, I would actually exactly. put the bag uh, uh, on the on the carpet and carpet. sleep because <laughs> yes, <laughs> the the transit places have slept many times. You know, just on the carpet on the floor. <laughs> so uh, these are all like very very good uh, humbling experiences, but. Um, the unfortunate thing is i had to play a match the next day or the day after <laughs> i mean travel itself didn't bother me but you know you were not definitely not in the best of shape at that time but um i used to read a lot of books uh, really into reading that would help me a lot um apart from that you know nothing nothing major books were the, my only this thing because in all those long flights they didn't have uh, on screen screen entertainment yeah. and all at that time you know yeah yeah and uh, you know it's another question which has come in i mean uh, the question is uh, how does uh, how does one improve their mental strength you have uh, any suggestions you know uh, mental you strength did? is the least talked about mm -hmm. and i think uh, it's something we need to really start addressing more and more um there were times where i felt like i could have uh, um use somebody's help Yeah. Be, there was a, one particular scenario i will tell you this happened for sure and i'm glad i was able to get over it i would step step in to play a match and i would go re get ready to serve and then there'll be a voice in my head that says double fault <laughs> okay my own head i don't know where it came from and i would hit a double fault i'll get a short ball and then there'll be a voice in my head miss miss it and then i would i would miss that ball I didn't know where this was coming from this happened over a couple of tournaments and I did not know how to fix it so um I happened to read a tennis book at that time and it clearly said what I needed to do it actually addressed what I had to do it said whenever you have those negative thoughts take a step back 5 seconds and ca cancel that negative thought with a positive one so if if something says uh, double fault stop it uh, tap the ball two two more times and then say it's going to be a good serve and then go ahead and hit it and that completely changed it it fixed okay. my problem these kind of things could happen to anybody yeah, yeah. so so i think uh, how do you fix mental i think you should leave it to experts because this is not something i'm uh, an expert on and i think there are people who are much better um uh, trained than me and they know more than me because mental toughness in general it's a huge ocean there are many things in there we don't know what is exactly your child or your problem so you need to go and uh, consult a person who's been there done that and then go through that that's what i would advise and now there are uh, and now there are uh, when you are there i don't know how many professionals Correct. were there Correct. now there are many more working in Correct. different uh, you know discipline for different Correct. teams so a lot more experienced uh, people who can help you with your uh, you know they like you know like a performance uh, enhancers uh, like, like you know Correct. more than One a mental trainer me, like, you know i should mention is uh, yoga and meditation did help me a lot it definitely okay. helped me focus a lot better meditation actually helped me um really um uh stay calm you know uh, really tough situations and uh, uh, when you needed some strength and all yoga really helped uh, calm me down a lot and i think um, yoga and meditation are uh, uh, there's nothing wrong i mean what are you going to lose why not yeah. do it you know actually last week talking to siddharth rawat uh, he also said the same i mean he meditates and uh, which has helped him stay and he also is very mentally like you, you know very tough player mentally So right. I guess you know, it is beneficial. Yes. They should uh, yes. try yes. it out. And yes. uh, and another listener uh, who is listening to us wants to know what was your happiest moment in tennis? Happiest moment in tennis? Wow. Um, I would think. Fed Cup, Olympics, Australian Open. Um, you know, bronze medal at uh, uh, at Asian, Asian Games, Games with Mahesh would be one. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Olympics let's try to forget it a little bit. <laughs> That was the worst I was just throwing in suggestions life. you can pick. The worst result of my entire life was Olympics so let's forget Olympics. Okay. Um Australian <laughs> Open in general Australian Open and also one other uh, really big uh win for me one huge uh moment for me was winning 
the uh, singles and doubles title of a 25k uh, okay. in uh, in germany so i won both the titles there that on was play? a very uh, it was not on, on play. play it was on carpet indoor actually wow i mean even credible <laughs> <laughs> it was carpet indoor and after that i never played on carpet indoor so <laughs> why i guess you signed off in style <laughs> now i've achieved it so i don't have to do it, it anymore <laughs> but uh, those are the uh, probably my best memories because i uh, i was alone again and uh, mm. i won like six uh, four or five matches in a row in singles and then four, four matches in doubles so that was that was a great great week for me I mean, uh, you just said uh, you know you started doing well in faster courts, and like, you know you are having success in doubles. At uh, that, I mean, you never thought of uh, taking up doubles a bit more uh, seriously, or money wasn't big enough. I mean, I don't know. Right now, money you can play only doubles and still make money. Money I, I, wasn't when you big were playing, enough. Was money? Yeah. The problem was a mixture of a few factors. One is I I should have in hindsight mm. I should have so money wasn't. Result, no? money wasn't a big factor the third is okay. i had not uh, see i saw that uh, austrian open i have played the main draw of a grand slam few times like f- four or five times i played in the in wimbledon main draw i played only in uh, doubles so i didn't really see the fruits of labor uh, of 7 8 years or, or six, seven years on tour i was more on the kind of a tough i didn't have the money and i i was traveling and playing all these lower tournaments and having a tough life i didn't see the good parts of uh, of what the tour could be also so, you didn't have a regular partner no i didn't That's have a regular there. partner and i didn't even think on those lines also you know oh, i didn't okay. have that kind of uh, uh, big big thought you know i was only thinking th- singles doubles didn't enter my brain even though <laughs> Leander Mahesh everybody's been doing this it didn't enter my brain <laughs> don't ask me why but they, but, they were uh, playing together no they were playing as a team and they were playing as a team, a team over there at that time but the, at that time they were starting to split up too you know so mm-hmm. um i would see them in all the grand slams <laughs> when i played the qualifying and everything but um, but the thing is um, end of the day i think it was a mixture of a few things i also got injured a little bit uh, in my shoulder my sh- i had a shoulder mm-hmm. injury so is a mixture of factors that i decide you know what i don't want to do this and and i just got married so that life was actually uh, a lot more nicer than than my life at that point so Correct. so it's a bunch of different factors so it like suddenly life was a lot more easier than uh, you know running <laughs> yeah. around with bags and uh, you know, yeah. trying to catch a flight train yes. play matches Yes. Take off double faults from your head. Yeah. <laughs> no, actually, when you talk about that, like a lot of times you'll see in smaller tournaments when kids are playing, like you know, kid is about to serve second serve, the parents will say from outside, double fault, poda there, and the kid will hundred percent make double fault <laughs> because he just reminded him double fault. <laughs> Correct. You know, my mom. I've written my book too. So my mom uh, is like the yin and yang. My dad's the most positive guy. My mom was. fairly negative when it came to uh, you know tennis court and the whole she'll be sitting on the sideline if i looked at her i will definitely sir because she was so nervous <laughs> all that pressure would come i mean she, she obviously meant well but you know uh, she has not played a sport right so it's much exactly. harder for her and not but, easy to control emotions no i mean it's not so easy. even if you're sitting outside it's like in a, fact I mean, now as a mom sometimes i just walk away because i know by me being there it's worse for for sahana you know mm-hmm. i just walk mm-hmm. away because it's uh, i don't want her thinking what my mom will say if i hit a double fault you know <laughs> no need no need to add that pressure yeah and uh, okay again in matches i mean you have played so many matches and uh, you know you played tough opponents and uh, you have beaten guys and the girls were ranked much higher so how do you prepare for these uh, tough matches when you know you are playing a, a tough opponent how did you how do you really prepare like what's your so, preparation so that's the thing you know one thing that i had is if i if i knew like um, the beginning my dad actually had come to one or two um, uh Austrian Open the second year first year i played qualifying my brother came with me ganesh actually traveled with me uh second year my dad came with me to Austrian Open qualifying and um he he is just a master strategic guy i mean he oh. could just strat- strategize uh 
to an extent that i can't even like tell you like um he would look at a he would look at certain somebody's match and he would basically just say okay this girl this particular girl i've played and i've beaten over the years uh from hungary she was phenomenal when you give it to the sides when when she was in the corner she would hit down lines cross courts with no problem if you hit it to the middle of the court to her Maybe. body she couldn't she play so those kind of things is very hard to pick out if you yeah. weren't uh, you know if you didn't know tennis and stuff Maybe. like that Yeah. So he had instilled that in me to figure out so strategy is very important at that level because between right. between 100 and 200 everybody plays the same there's no yeah. difference in fact it's hard everybody, everybody and, moves well yeah, yeah. and uh, how they how you adjust to that person's game and how you are able to throw something different so those kind of things um that's how i would prepare for a match um and you know that end of the day you know you have to um, stay with them throughout Three hours, four hours, whatever it takes you to stay with them, and also you, you as a pro player, you have to get to a stage where you know exactly what, how much sleep you need, what kind of food uh, helps you, uh, what kind of uh, warm ups help you, those kind of things. Many people like forty five minute warm up. Mm-hmm. I don't. I just need a ten minute warm up because yeah. I, I don't. I, yeah, I have great feel. I don't need to <laughs> keep on hitting forty five minutes. Yeah, correct. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it depends on each person, but I think you need to develop what works for you very well and and nail it. You know, that's very important. So I think uh, you know you you like, you know you said uh, your dad uh, you know, strategizes it for you. Like uh, suppose you go in with no information about uh, this uh, opponent. uh approximately how many games uh, do you take to figure out uh, what's going i'm sure you figure out so i just want to know whether it's one game or two games or three games no 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 sometimes it uh, you know it takes a while because uh, when you are on the pro tour everybody hits a, a decent forehand everybody hits a decent backhand so again the the thing that will help you is uh, uh throwing in a change of pace Yeah. throwing in a little bit of a shorter ball to see if they move forward better so these kind of things and then the serve and service return those those four things should determine what you can figure out in like three games four games by four five games uh, i think we should have a pretty good idea before you you know get blown out of the first set <laughs> <laughs> yeah. if you don't know what's happening you are exactly. you're pretty much done for the day <laughs> exactly exactly and uh, uh, talking about uh, earlier you mentioned about your injury so h- how did you manage i mean you had a neck injury right no it was like a shoulder and neck it was a, okay. a ligament tear that actually didn't need a surgery but it was it kept getting worse and worse we i still think it it could have happened just because of uh, wear and tear because i was lifting so many mm. bags and uh, tra- okay. <laughs> traveling exactly. all over europe in fact the trolleys weren't that uh, common like you know we didn't have the set many trolley bags like no nope. you had to the worst bag part the is the worst part is i have to tell you this these are all stupidity now when i think about it <laughs> but at that time you couldn't tell me that i lived in luxembourg and you never used to get there was no indian store in luxembourg okay in paris there were a lot of indian shops and uh, due to some bombing in paris they had closed all the locker rooms down in the station oh. so to walk to that place and back was about 2 kilometers i'll carry all my bags because i needed those indian groceries it <laughs> <laughs> was more important <laughs> yes yes so all those things did did my shoulder and i think you know and uh, what's your opinion of uh, you know doing us college earlier you mentioned that your time so now you think it has changed or uh, it, has changed you know, it has changed a little bit it has changed a little bit but not a whole lot i know that uh, i i was uh, um uh, hearing somdev somdev this thing so i think there are a lot of factors one needs to think about when you choose college one is how was your training in india at that time if your training is not good enough and your goal is to play college tennis eventually i mean uh, play pro tennis eventually college can be a good stepping stone for training as well because you get to train with good players and the facilities are phenomenal no question about it but if your training is fairly good in india and it's uh, it's gotten you to where you are right now um 
between the ages of 18 and 21 they're actually prime prime years i don't know what your goal is in life if your goal is actually to play pro tennis i will tell you this it takes 2 to 3 years of being on the tour to actually start making it nobody goes and plays the first 3 months and and makes it to the top level that's you had to have like three or four <laughs> really good wild cards and and those kind of things so if you're thinking you're going to go on tour at 21 for 3 years and then make it and you're you're happy about it then you should do it but it depends on what you think um your body is and how how you are able to because the other problem with college tennis is they they make you play a lot and you have to keep up your grades it's not as easy mm-hmm. as people think it is you have to be on top of your game and everything and by the end of 3 years i have seen a lot of people burn out mm. i think they had enough there's too much no studying playing so matches so there are people who have made it there are people like somdev and there are people like harsh there are people who have made it and and all kudos to them that they've kept their uh, thought process uh, into playing pro tennis at the end of this thing and and keep at it but not everyone can so you got to i i basically as i would say it depends on the individual and it depends on your how much money you have because 3 years after you finish college you have to have 3 years of money funds to to play pro tennis 3 years of spending you mean <laughs> yeah and nothing back yep <laughs> yeah yeah and uh, uh, yeah i mean uh, i think uh, this is something uh, people would love to hear from you you so like you know rajesh wants to know uh, you know your suggestions for under 12 under 14 world world players real players um, yeah so uh, it should be more about development at this point i still don't uh, i'm i'm a big believer that you you should be peaking at 17 not uh, 17 or 18 or uh, even 16 and a half i don't think peaking at 12 or 13 is is really that important because you will see, even here in 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 uh, in america we conduct tournaments i conduct tournaments in my club usta tournaments you will see that under 12 has 32 players under 14 has about 18 to 20 players or maybe even even 32 by 16 it's half or even less than half it's 8 to 10 players in the draw and by 18 there are four people in the draw so what i'm trying to tell you is you got to sustain whatever you're doing for the next few years so don't go crazy about playing too many tournaments when you're under 12 you need to play tournaments but space them out give them time to get better and think about development more than development what do Thank i mean you. Uh, yeah don't think about ranking that much ranking will automatically happen when you focus on your on your uh, process yeah. uh if you fo- focus too much on the process uh, i mean uh, too much on the results then it's a downfall is a number one recipe for downfall is looking at rankings so uh between uh, at least at 12 years old focus a lot more on development by f- under 14 you can add a few more tournaments than you were playing in under 12 definitely few more tournaments maybe one tournament a month is is pretty good i think for under 14 or maybe maybe one extra but uh, by under 16 you should be really you know upping that and really getting to where you want to be in terms of you can focus on rankings and everything by by the time you're under 16 under 18 not before that that's what i would tell under 12 and under 14 should be about development should be about uh, focusing on the right fitness because some kids may be super fast but they can't last long uh it was the exact yeah. opposite for me i can last yeah. long but i don't have the uh, quickness so you have to focus on the right things so uh, development would be should be the focus uh little going off from a like you know very serious uh, topic uh this is something uh, i was told to ask apparently when you were like 8 9 years old like oh, you God. and ganesh you oh, got uh, you almost got kidnapped <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah we did actually uh we were uh, playing outside uh we were just playing just in the mud and then there was this guy who sh- and at that time this was a time when there were a lot of kidnappings happening i don't know if you know this like in the 1980s uh, uh, early 80s i was probably okay. about 5 or 6 and ganesh would have been 10 and he okay. uh, we were playing outside and there was a guy who actually offered us sweets um 
this is exactly the the mo for them method of operation for all mm. these people okay. these kidnappers they used oh, to offer okay. sweets yeah. and then immediately take you out and i mean all these thing about beggars the same thing as uh, what mm. is a jay ho movie that, <laughs> that mm. movie <laughs> it was uh, it was kind of that same idea but then we um, we escaped because we we were warned way ahead so we ran inside and when we brought our mom outside that guy was oh, not yeah. even in the vicinity he had escaped so it definitely was an attempt so, so this, again no uh, not see something more embarrassing <laughs> i was like okay <laughs> no 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 i mean the the, the reason i asked is again uh, coimbatore actually you no know, experience from coimbatore helped you later in life in rotterdam <laughs> 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 you know at 5 6 itself you already knew how to protect yourself so in your 18 and 20 yep actually you want to talk about it i don't know how many of them know about this uh, rotterdam station incident i think uh, you must so, uh, mention about the station yeah yeah so i was uh, going in between uh, tournaments and i had to change a train in uh, rotterdam and uh, all of a sudden there was a train strike at like 1 uh, in the morning or something like that so we had to get out of the um, out of the train and there were going to be no trains until 6 or 7 in the morning so i'm sitting in rotterdam station which is uh, in holland and it's 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 a port so in okay. in general holland <laughs> yeah. has uh, it's free drugs everything is uh, yeah i mean is, you don't go to jail for using drugs you can get drugs in holland in in any store you go to so that mm. station itself in the night there was um there were a couple of cops who were uh, using the sticks on people lathi charging people oh, okay. and then there were there were some pimps and a uh, few prostitutes sitting around drug addicts it was it was <laughs> it was yeah. like a horror horror movie and here i was sitting <laughs> <laughs> in the station by myself at like 1 in the morning uh i mean the the thing is they don't really come and attack everyone that they see okay. it's uh, it's in between them if you're caught in that the, thankfully there was no guns anywhere so the uh, looks like it was a, it, this, this is just an everyday occurrence because nothing gets reported in the papers and all this is something that goes on every day there no. you know mm-hmm. cops lathi charging people and asking people to go and stuff like that so i had to wait until 7 in the morning with all these people and then finally i got a train out of there so <laughs> it's scary uh, it's scary scary lot of yeah. scary things so i mean i think travel makes you tougher and uh, you know all these experiences correct. Uh, correct you you you're prepared for some other eventuality because of this experience correct like how your childhood experience helped you here <laughs> yeah Yeah I mean uh, that, that's one of the things uh, Sahana comes and tells me mom this is happening I'm like calm down it can't be worse than Rotterdam <laughs> correct <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, yeah, as, as she grows up and uh, experiences uh, things in life she'll realize why you are so oh. calm now <laughs> right 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 I mean uh, coming back to uh, tennis I mean you like in your academy uh, you have a lot of indian american kids right playing and yeah. you said some of them are good yeah. so um, uh, it come from one of the questions but apparently uh, a lot of kids do well in 12s and 14s but no you don't see them uh, go higher is it because of the reasons you mentioned earlier or uh, it is also other... there there's also another reason is that you know they have too many options here to choose from as to what they want to do mm. you know mm. like um uh, basically many of the kids here they are also many of our indian kids are super smart in school they are yeah. they're doing academics. really well in school academics they're doing really well and so at that age at 9th 10th they they sometimes have to choose what they want to do you know you can't uh, uh, and, and in the us it's not like india where they play every day they play two three times a week and stuff oh, like correct, that yeah. so yeah. it's different and so and that's one of the reasons they get to at at 14 or 15 they basically end up choosing the minute they go into high school they end up choosing what they want to do and many of them say you know what uh, and and another thing i'll tell you you play a tournament almost every weekend it is so draining mentally and physically on the child they don't mm. want to do that anymore uh, as and when they get older you know yeah. you need to know how to pace it that's very important yeah. i think uh, i think that one, uh, maybe one of the reasons playing too many tournaments is a big um, uh, big recipe for burn burn up 
I think there again, I think the ranking and uh, like, you know, all those things are the, the reasons to play more tournaments. Correct. Instead of Correct. You know, exactly. enjoying the sport, exactly. improving your game and then at the right time to Correct. accelerate and commit. Correct. To, you know, somebody yeah. has to understand the sport to exactly. really get it right. Correct. Otherwise, you're going to overdo most of Correct. The, Correct. the time. And uh, I mean, you are a double ender. I mean, uh, did you ever think that it would have been better for you if you had played single end? No. <laughs> you had a very good backhand. I mean, no reason to think, but I'm just... Uh, uh, um, I mean, the thing is, the thing about single hand players is, um, there are a lot of advantages. Uh, they have better reach sometimes and stuff like that. But in this day and age where people are, uh, most tournaments are played on hard courts and um, it's, uh, the, they've hit a lot of depth on the shots and stuff like that. So it's, it, it helps to have double hand, I think. If somebody had to choose right now, if I had to choose my my student to play double or single, I'll choose double. Just because I feel like it's, uh, with a single hand player, one thing you got to remember is, it's like a serve and volleyer. It takes time for it to get uh, better and better. You can't immediately start playing really great single hand. You will get better, but it takes time. Are you it's ready to put that kind of uh, that kind of time? And is the child ready to uh, <laughs> face Except a lot losses. of? Yes, yes. <laughs> I feel like that's a, and it's easier when you go double handed, and then you can slice. It's it, it, it's mm. a better option to have mm. rather than go with single hand in this day and age. But then there are a lot of talented kids who are very strong uh, from a young age. Why not? I mean, it definitely looks nicer. It's more pleasing on the eye. Single hand players. I mean, there's no two ways that single hand looks looks a lot better, yeah, you know. Exactly. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, unfortunately, I think uh, if you ask this question, Federer also he might <laughs> himself say he probably would have played double hand. Double. He would have won more Grand Slams against Rafa, you know. Yeah. You earlier you mentioned about uh, meditation. So, have you ever done visualization or like what is your yes uh, take yes on that? I have. So I read a book, um, not a book, I read somewhere about Billie Jean King. Before okay. she plays a match, she actually takes a tennis ball. She used to, I read this, she used to take a, a tennis ball and uh, totally look at it and visualize on it uh, about half an hour before a match. Just keep on looking at the ball. Just meditate on the ball. And what this is, uh, this has helped me in some matches when I have no feel, I would have lost the first set 6-1 no feel in the ball, I'm hitting all the off-center, I'm not feeling the ball at all properly. I've actually taken a ball during the changeover and just looked at it for like one or two minutes, when I, how much of a time I have, and really focused on looking at the ball very carefully, like a cake. <laughs> but when I go there and play, it has helped because it helps me watch the ball better and focus better on the ball and stuff like that. I don't know if it has uh, any uh, substance and what what it does in terms of the technicalities of it, but it has helped. Visualization yeah. before a match as to how you're going to play. You're going to play a fantastic match. You're going to um, move well. You're going to come and come and finish points at the net. You visualize thinking you're going to play a great match and you go in. I think it, it has something to Nirpma, I won't yes. take too much time, but uh, I want. I don't want to, you know, end the conversation without asking you a couple of things, which uh, you know, I really like the listeners to hear from you. Okay. Okay. My, my, you know, my first thing is, uh, I mean, I know you are very vocal about uh, AATA and uh, their ways. Okay. We'll keep that aside. Okay. My uh, question is, if uh, they offer you. Uh, uh, like you know, a, a role to play in AATA. For example, be a Fed Cup uh, captain. Would you be uh, open to uh, that uh, offer? I mean, for me, the thing is, uh, this is the first year our Fed Cup team actually has gone into World Group. World you have no yeah. idea how huge that is for mm -hmm. us. I mean, Correct. that is something that uh, I've dreamt all my life uh, for us to go into World Group. And these girls finally have accomplished it. Yeah. Um, if, if they would like me, of course, I w I'm always available. Anything that, that is needed for Indian tennis, I'm always available. So yes, yes to that. Okay. That's nice. I hope, uh, it uh, happens and, okay. uh, Ankita and Carmen and, uh, all others will uh, benefit. Uh, and, uh, 
Uh, what is your uh, opinion or uh, advice? Because earlier we mentioned about the WTA tour and the men's tour, and uh, like one of the chats uh, had a question uh, that how different it is to coach girls compared to boys. So coming from you, I mean from your experience, coaching girls like fourteen-year-olds, sixteen-year-olds. Um, I mean, thirteen and sixteen-year-olds are still okay. In general, okay. I'll tell you something. Uh, tennis players are are hard lot to to coach. because they're fairly spoiled okay adamant <laughs> yes fairly spoiled uh it's it's not easy but end of the day um between girls and boys i think um uh boys may be slightly simpler to coach just because they don't have so many other things going on in their bodies okay, mm, okay. women have other problems that a lot of hormones going on we have other mm. issues that are going on you know so it's really important to understand uh <laughs> where a girl's coming from when uh, she's going through something for example i'll i'll tell you a small uh, story my brother and i <laughs> he was we were at the us open a spring qualifying a spring us open qualifying uh, within a few minutes and um he i got my racket strung but it was a little too uh, strung too tight okay because in us open for some reason they always string 5 to 10 pounds okay. more than usual each okay. each stringing machine is different right so yeah. I, mine was strung a little too tight so my brother's like what is this why why didn't you check before i lost it okay i was so <laughs> mad at him right before a match i'm going in i'm literally having no mind to play I end up winning the match on top of it. <laughs> okay. So, so uh, I remember Jay. Uh, you know Jay Deva, right? So Jay yeah. was uh, also there, and he was like, "I'm never coming to watch any of your matches if you're going to play like this." I said, "You know, it's not the question of my tennis at that point. There are times when mm. girls in general are a lot more delicate than the boys, and I think we need to take that into consideration when we te- when we coach girls. You know." it's uh, definitely a little more complicated and i think uh, when men coach girls they need to keep that in mind it's not like uh, um it's not like mm-hmm. a, a 13 14 year old may be having her period it's it's very hard at that time you know Correct. so you can't they're not their normal self and you got to understand that when you coach them you know? and uh, like you know you had mentioned that you like watching uh, men's tennis uh, like you know more than uh, women's tennis yeah Uh, what is your opinion of uh, uh, like you know uh, uh, women coaching men i mean andy murray uh, you know did with uh, morismo coaching him so what is your uh, you know, personally how do you look at it you would be you would love to do it i i would love to do it the only thing is i think there needs to be a respect first um i know that andy murray had this genuine respect for morismo then it's possible if you are doing it just because you know you want to give it a shot let's try and take that's not the way it has to be it has to be because you genuinely respect that person as a coach forget about the uh, whether it's a female or a male you know when when you treat somebody as your coach you have to give them that respect that they need you know uh, it's immaterial whether they are female or male so once you have that it doesn't matter who you coach you know you just need to have that respect as a coach to that person. Oh, I think okay. it's definitely possible to do it. Um no reason why it can't be done. And uh, you did uh, commentary assignments you said, no? I mean are we planning to do more? Um, I mean with your tactical uh, thinking, I'm sure uh, you know you'll do a very good job uh, commenting matches. I think I'll be a better commentator now than I, when I was when I was 22. <laughs> mm. But uh, you know, um yeah, I mean uh, the thing is the travel part of it was a little tough over the few years but now I think uh, I'm definitely open to it. Yeah. And uh, what's uh, coming up uh, what, what's planned for you now you have any plans to like you know the book you said you're going to write later. So Correct. Any coaching assignments? I mean, in in Tampa also you coach, right? And then you yeah, I, I am uh, the director of a tennis club here. I do coach here as well. I do have a bunch of kids that I teach here as well. Um, nothing too uh, this thing uh, major plans as such for now. Just uh, doing our daily process with. I'm just teaching Sahana and a uh, few, few other kids and some adults as well over here. Um, but um, uh, definitely be open to. teaching more in india 
that's uh, that that would be something that I'll be looking forward oh, to. Oh, you're looking to teach in India soon? Yes. Oh, yes. That's nice. That will be yeah. interesting. Maybe uh, some clinics and stuff like that will be fun. Yeah, true. And uh, I mean, I'll just uh, talk like the book, uh, you know, your Moonballer, you had written, and uh, it's published and it's on. Uh, earlier, uh, one of my friends had asked me, uh, is it available on e-books now, or where is it that uh, you know they can actually? You know, it's available in the U.S. The uh, okay. Indian publisher has, I think, he stopped publishing because he is. Uh, I have to double check on that. I will get back okay. to you. I think it's available on Amazon. But um, okay. Amazon, uh, I thought me... I saw, but uh, I don't know whether it's only in US or it's worldwide. In the US, it's in completely Europe, available. I think they have difficulty, right? Amazon. Pardon me. In Europe, in Europe, I don't think uh, no, they're. Uh, Europe, you know, we in... don't. We didn't have a, a, a copyright over there, but in okay. India, I believe that it's available on Amazon and on eBooks. But uh, let me double check that and get back. Okay, okay, because there was uh, like you know, like last two days, people were asking me, and I said, okay, I will ask you, and uh, you can. You can hear it uh, from the horse's Absolutely. mouth <laughs> because you are an authority. You know what next? Okay. Uh, before I wind up, this is the final question. But I think uh, the like you know, this is something which everybody would love to hear. Your 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 words of advice to Indian players, parents, and coaches. Wow! All of and, them together combined. Yeah, you can give your uh, advice to all. um end of the day you will get the support i mean you shouldn't look at the support part of it you should just do your process you should just go through what you do on an every single day basis just work, keep working hard and results will follow and uh, uh, i mean if if we if we had thought about okay what is it in for me will i be able to get sponsorship and work towards that we would not have gotten anywhere we just kept doing what we had to do on an every day basis kept doing what we had to do what tournaments we had to play everything and then end of the day yes i was short on sponsorship but you know what i got to have the experience of a lifetime in this so uh focus on the process not on the results that's what i would tell everyone just keep focusing on the process and it will happen eventually it will happen if you're doing everything right if you have the right people around you it will happen because tennis is not just one person it's a mixture of a few people coming together your parents your coach a fitness trainer um eventually the sponsor and everything but uh in the beginning all these three four elements have to come together and work together to make that that person go some place thank you nirma i'm sorry i took a lot of time but actually <laughs> i didn't realize we had taken so much time only okay. when i got a message saying please uh, save it because it's going to end now i have to say that no, let's close and come again but thank you so much for being uh, so patient giving yes. us uh, all the time and sharing your experiences with us i'm sure everybody listening in uh, you know would have found this uh, wonderful listening thank to you, you. And, thank you and thank, thank you, you once you. again no speaking you. to you and uh, nice words to bye. end the uh, end the chat no bye bye say hi to sarah and sanjeev we'll, we'll meet soon in india <laughs> perfect thank you bye bye okay. bye bye take care bye all of you guys listening bye good night and thanks for uh, signing in